Saturday, college football, as per usual. I've got some live dogs for you, a couple totals as well. I'll be breaking down some of the biggest matchups in week three, an interesting slate, including Alabama, Wisconsin, and a UCF TCU. Remember that the Power Five is on a really strong 67, 41, and 4 overall run going into Friday. You can always comment down below with any questions or thoughts on these selections for Saturday. We start at noon Eastern with Central Michigan getting 20 points at Illinois. This, to me, a very similar handicap to the Oklahoma State-Tulsa matchup I broke down earlier this week on Wager Talk Today. Complete sandwich spot for Illinois, who is off its first home win over a ranked opponent since 2019, and its first home win over a non-conference ranked opponent since 2011. Thanks to a defensive TD, the Fighting Illini were able to rally to beat Kansas 23-17 last week. Not good for my 5% play on their win total under 5.5 for the season, but I think we could fade Brett Bielema here. The Illini have the Big Ten opener against Nebraska on deck. Just do not see them winning this game by three touchdowns. After all, last season, Illinois barely beat a MAC team, Toledo. Now, Central Michigan may not be in that same stratosphere as Toledo was last year. Uh, the Chippewas also did get blown out last week by uh, FIU, Florida International. Let's acknowledge that. But that loss to FIU was due to being minus six in turnover margin. Uh, Central Michigan actually had the edge in total yards. Also, Chippewa's head coach, Jim McElwain, 11-6 and six ATS, all-time as a road dog. He's 4-0 ATS the last four times. He's gotten 20 or more against current pow power four teams. It is. Take the points with the chips in this noon Eastern time kickoff. Number two, another noon Eastern kickoff I'm looking at is Bama at Wisconsin. Guys, the Badgers have not been this large of an underdog in Madison since 1991. Incredibly, they're 0-11 straight up as a double-digit home dog the last 35 seasons. Believe it or not, I actually see value in laying it with Alabama here, but as many of you know, double-digit road faves, not really my style. Therefore, let's look at an alternate market here where we can go against Wisconsin. How about under their team total of 16 and a half? I just don't see the Badgers score many points Saturday, guys. Coordinator Phil Longo, he was brought in to modernize this offense. It hasn't worked. He just doesn't seem to have the right personnel. Now, my concern with Bama covering this number is their offense, but the Crimson Tide defense looks great so far, as you'd expect, uh, with Kane Womack coming over from South Alabama. Uh, the Tide have allowed, or they last week, I should say, they allowed just 3.8 yards per play. Uh, Wisconsin's only way to cover here is in a low-scoring game anyway. Even if they cover, I don't think they're going to get over 16 and a half. So the way to play this is the Badgers under their team total. Speaking of totals, let's go under 43 and a half for Utah, Utah State. Big time uncertainty at quarterback as these in-state foes uh, meet for the first time since 2015. We know Utah is going to be without Cam Rising. That's a problem. Because after Rising left last week's game versus Baylor, the Utes did not score a single point. Now, Utah State did not score a single point the entire game last week versus USC as Spencer Petrus was a late scratch, which we did not appreciate here on the Power Five. Petrus is questionable for this week, but even if he does return, Utah State not going to be able to move the ball much against the Utah defense that gave up just 73 yards in the first half last week against Baylor. So under 43 and a half in the Battle of the Brothers which is a 4.30 Eastern time kickoff. Moving to the night slate, Hawaii plus four and a half at Sam Houston State. I do the research on these low-profile games, so you don't have to. Remember, a couple weeks ago, Sam Houston State, a nice outright winner for us here on the Power Five against Rice. But here they're laying points, and that is a role that did not suit the Bearcats well last season. Uh, their first as a FBS program, oh, by the way, Three times in 2023, Sam Houston laid points, and all three times they failed to cover. In fact, twice they lost the game outright. I know it can be sometimes an adventure on the mainland, so to speak, for Hawaii, but they've had an extra week to prepare for this game after a close call against UCLA two weeks ago. I think the Bows are live here to pull the outright upset. Let's take a plus four and a half. This is a 7 p.m. kickoff Eastern. Oh, by the way. Guys, I'll get to my final play in just a minute, but... You don't want to forget about that special offer I've been talking about all week going on at wagertalk.com. Get all of my college football, all of my NFL for the next four weeks for only $199. That is less than $50 per week. Obviously, last Saturday in college football, how did I do? Well, I nailed all three sides, including Northern Illinois against Notre Dame. Also had San Jose State over Air Force, ULM over UAB. I've been talking about it all week. Why have I been talking about it all week? Because those three dogs all won outright and covered the number by a combined 81 and a half points. 
You go back to last season, I'm on a 25-11 and 11 CFB run, 67% start this season, 6-3. I'm going to have three more sides for you on Saturday, all underdogs. Check back at wt.buzz slash bp for the complete card. And you don't want to forget, going back to April, I'm a ridiculous 43 and 15 in all sports on Saturdays. I think that bodes well for a good college football season. Again, wt.buzz slash bp to get my top college football selections for Saturday. Okay, one more for the road here on the Power 5. I'm taking UCF, that's Central Florida, obviously, on the money line against TCU. Initially, this was all UCF money as the Knights steamed as high as minus two and a half. Since then, though, it's been buyback time on TCU, but I'm a believer in this UCF side as a real dark horse to get to the Big 12 championship game. There's a lot of question marks in that conference right now this year. Uh, Gus Malzahn, he loves his quarterback, KJ Jefferson, the transfer from Arkansas. I just think UCF is the right side here, guys. I have them power rated as a top 25 team, believe it or not. They are minus 105 in the money line right now. TCU's already lost to Stanford, for crying out loud. So give me UCF uh, to win Saturday night in Fort Worth. Uh, That's a 7.30 kickoff, I do believe. It's 7 or 7.30. I'm sorry, I did not write that down. Anyway, let's just recap the Power 5 for you. Uh, In case you missed anything, forgot anything, whatever. We just want to recap for you. Number one, Central Michigan plus 20 at Illinois. Number two, Wisconsin under 16 and a half points team total against uh, against Alabama, pardon me. Number three, under 43 and a half for Utah, Utah State. Number four, Hawaii plus four and a half at Sam Houston State. And number five, UCF Moneyline against TCU. Again, feel free to let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below. Always appreciate the feedback here on the Power Five, whether it's positive or negative. Don't forget, to head on over to wt.buzz slash bp to take advantage of that special offer I mentioned earlier or just to pick up Saturday's entire card for $29 if you don't want to commit long term. You're also going to want to remember to subscribe to the Wage Talk YouTube channel if you already haven't done that. Uh, I'll be dropping the NFL edition of the Power 5 on Saturday so you can check that out. Get all your bets in for Sunday. I had a winning week one in the NFL in addition to the great start here in college. Uh, Not only do I do the Power 5 daily, of course, but you can't forget about the morning wager every Monday through Friday with Mark Zinno and I. Just another reason to be subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. So that is going to do it for the Week 3 College Football Edition of the Power 5. Smash that like button if you already haven't done so. I've given you five good reasons to hit the thumbs up. Until next time, let's catch some tickets.